ipmnation.com. Hey, welcome everybody. It's that time again. Matt Connerton unleashed in the afternoon. We are live on WMNH 95.3 FM, emanating from downtown Manchester, New Hampshire. Streaming at WMNHradio.org. Of course, we're also on Facebook via Facebook Live on the Matt Connerton Unleashed Facebook page. Uh, happy, uh, Happily so. Happy to report that that's working. Of course, yesterday uh, we had that, uh, that worldwide outage on Facebook. It was... Uh, it was very strange. Uh, more about that in a second. But uh, let's see. Of course, we're also on Comcast Channel 97 if you're in Manchester. And uh, let's see. I think I mentioned everything else, right? WMNHradio.org. Uh, and as always on uh, 95.3 if you're local here in Manchester. But um, the the bummer about that of all days to have that happen with Facebook yesterday, you know, we had on uh, Dr. Richard A. Lawhern, also known as Red, and uh, Red has a, a huge following online. And the last time he was on, which was back on uh, November 28th, if I remember correctly, um, it was by far the busiest the Facebook live chat has ever been during this program. Uh, just a, a, just tons of people uh, wanting to participate in that. And, uh, and it, it probably would have been the same thing yesterday. But <laughs> And we did have a great discussion, and of course you can hear it at WMNHradio.org, where all the shows are archived. But, um, yeah, I just, the entire show uh, during our discussion, I was, uh, and John Hopwood was here as well, the entire show, about every 10 minutes or so, I was trying to get back on to Facebook so I could connect with the Facebook Live and get that going. And I I had false hope at one point, because early in the show, Facebook wasn't doing anything and then little by little as the show progressed, I seem to be getting further and further with uh, the whole process of, uh, of getting, getting on Facebook Live and streaming there. But it was all, it was all a big tease because I never quite was able to uh, complete that last step and seal the deal and, and connect on Facebook Live to the Matt Connerton Unleashed Facebook page. The entire two hours I tried and never quite got there. So, like I said, little by little, you know, like Messenger started working again. And then, you know, it started to let me connect to the program that I need to connect to but and pair up the devices and whatnot. But it just just never quite got there. So we'll have to uh, we'll have to do that again, you know, hopefully relatively soon. Because what are the odds of that happening twice? Because this was a, a big deal. I, you know, it's funny. When I was at home... I was at home doing my show prep and I'm like, you know, all of a sudden I can't do stuff like I, I can't do certain things on Facebook. And I'm like, oh, no, am I in some sort of Facebook jail? Because it's weird when you end up in Facebook jail. It's not like you just get locked out of your account temporarily. You it's like there's certain things you can do, but certain other things you can't do. So at first I thought it was just me. But uh, no, it was certainly not just me. And we have a call. Hi, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed. Who's this? Oh, hello, everybody. Eric Gagnon, welcome, sir. Eric Gagnon, yeah, of ha- course. Happy, happy Thursday, Thursday. Of yes. course, I'm no longer on Facebook until Easter Monday, so oh. it didn't affect me at all. What are you, uh, celebrating Lent? No, giving it up for Lent, no Facebook. G- g- well, that's what I meant, giving it up so for people Lent. People going nuts yesterday saying, oh, my God, no Facebook for 18 hours, I guess, and yeah. it didn't affect me any. Easy G ensuring his path into heaven. That is, uh, I think that's very wise you know, of you. Yes. I've done before, though. I've given it up for the whole month of uh, December for uh, Christmas. So it's good to, to shut yourself off on social media once in a while. I have heard that, yes. So a friend of mine is referred to Facebook as Satan a fr- at times. It can be. A, a friend of yours refers to Facebook as Satan? It can be. So I just wanted to give you that quick tip that I have. I have to go, so have a great show, and I'll be listening. Eric, enjoy your Lent, or or don't enjoy your Lent. Actually, I think the idea is you're not supposed to enjoy Lent. You know, I'm not a religious person myself, but my attitude has always been, uh, as far as uh, fasting or giving things up or all the things that uh, people do, 
in, in their religious traditions. Uh, I, I just, I personally, my thing has always been, you know, I think life's hard enough. <laughs> Isn't it? You know what I mean? Like, uh, I don't know if I need to make things harder. Now, if I knew that making things harder on myself would uh, assure me of my uh, entrance into uh, through the pearly gates when I pass away, uh, then, you know, maybe I would be willing to make things harder on myself. You know, no pain, no gain. I understand, but I'm agnostic. So uh, it really just isn't my deal. Uh, although if I, if I'm proven wrong, I guess I'll end up in hell. So maybe, uh, maybe that's, uh, maybe I should rethink that. I don't know. Uh, let's see. I never gave the date, by the way. It is Thursday, March 14th, 2019. I, you know, I I was raised Catholic, by the way. And, uh, you know, we never really did. We never really did the Lent thing. I mean, I went to to a Catholic school from grade two to grade eight, and I remember talk of Lent, right? I, so I was always aware of what it was and what the basic idea was, but uh, never really got into it. We never did the thing in, in my house, uh, certainly of, uh, you know, no meat on Friday or anything like that. Uh, we never did any of that, which is odd because my father is very Catholic. In fact, this is a really odd thing. I've never asked him about it. Because uh, I just avoid the subject with him. But um, my father would uh, teach a class on confirmation. Like if there were, this was something that he took on. uh, Actually, well, here, let me back up. My dad was originally uh, intending to be a priest. He was actually in the seminary studying for the priesthood when he met the woman who had ultimately become my mother. And they fell in love and he realized that the priesthood was not for him. Lucky for me, right? Or I wouldn't be here. So, um, my dad, uh, when I was, uh, a young, well, maybe a preteen, I don't know how old I was, but my dad was teaching a a confirmation course where every Wednesday for several weeks, these three kids would come to the house and my dad would sit down with them and, you know, go through whatever it is, you know, they had to talk about for, for the confirmation. It's one of the seven sacraments in Catholicism, but for whatever reason, I was never encouraged to confirm, I think my father knew that uh, I was skeptical. Hi, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed. Who's this? Hi, Matt. It's Scumpy. Jeff Scumpy Lorenz. How are you, sir? Uh, not very good. Um, oh no! I just got some news. I just I, I'm calling. I want to I want to put a shout out, uh, uh, Mr. John Johnny Bones Robichaud, an old bass player and, a, and one of my best friends in the world growing up. Being a DefCon lover, and and we played a lot of shows together. He passed away today. Oh no! And they and he was only like uh, I don't know. I think he's fifty. He's he's younger than me. I don't even know if he turned fifty yet. But, oh! And I got the call yesterday, and I'm like, oh, they said he's got probably hours to go. I go, oh, oh my god. I, oh no! Uh, shit. I'm just kind of devastated. Uh, so um, uh, a big shout out to Mr. Johnny Bones from the band Damage and and Defcon. He's you know he played with us a bunch and oh wow uh, and I love the band. I've known him since we were like he was a fan of ours like when he was 20 years old and he couldn't wait to get in a band. Yeah. And then we ended up then we ended up renting rooms together and at Damage and Defcon we were right next to each other and oh we were teaching them stuff and oh they loved us and they came to every show and then we started playing shows together and and the, the guy just he was just a Oh my God! The, you see his energy on stage. He was unbelievable. He could sing. He could play bass. He was all over the place, jumping around like a maniac. Yeah, I loved. I, I really loved. I loved the band. And uh, oh, wow. I knew yesterday that that uh, he, they said he only had hours to go. Oh, and I didn't go, and they said that's okay. He wouldn't. He wouldn't have known you anyways. And oh no, kidding! It's one of those uh, one of those long fighting things. On uh, mm. I mean, for a young guy, I, I don't want to get into it too much. But I understand that. Yeah, I love the man, and. Um, so what we're going to do is um, we're going to do um, April 6th at the Davion. We're going to do a, a tribute show to Mr. Johnny Bones, Robichon. And uh, it's going to be some of the damage guys there. There's going to be a bunch of musicians we're going to play. It's going to be – and we're going to we're try to raise a little money for his daughter and, and stuff like that. Okay. So we're going to make that a tribute show to uh, Mr. Johnny Bones and – I'm sorry, I had to bring everything down on you, but no, I no, just, I, I just found out the news. About, I just found out the news about 20 minutes ago, and and I'm, uh, you know, and you're the voice I hear. I said, well, I got to call Matt and 
you know, no, it's, I'm, it's, yeah, it's, I'm, it's I'm a glad, sad day, Mr. Johnny Bones. I'm glad, you, I'm glad you called, Scumpy. And, you know, I mean, I, and, and if he's a, a guy from the area who was in the music scene, you know, there's probably other people listening uh, who also oh, knew yeah, him, you, who also knew him. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, I'm, I'm glad you called with that. I mean, it's, it's sad news. No, you, but, still, you still go around town, you still see Damage shirts. The band was, the sure. blues band was named Damage, and, it, and you still see shirts around town. And, yeah. And the guy was unbelievably, and yeah, what an entertainer. The guy, he was just, I, and the guy was always laughing, always, uh, it's just so much fun. This guy was just, he was just a blast from the day I met him. Dump gone, dump gone. He was like, oh, yeah. yeah. And he just started playing. And then we we started, tell, you know, showing him stuff and him their, their band. and Yeah. Oh, my God. And they ended, they ended up being so good. They, you know, they kind of took over for Defcon when we had kids and stuff. And oh, no kidding. People still wanted to see that kind of music. He went and see Damage. He didn't see, he went to see Damage because we were all kids and, you know, and, oh, it was great. And. You know, we'd show up and, you know, you know, I'd sit in and fill in and sing some songs and play some guitar and they'd sit in. And uh, we're going to have a, at the Dab on uh, April 6th, it's going to be uh, a big tribute to uh, Johnny Bones. Okay. All right. So if you can, if you can plug that on April 6th, Johnny Bones, it's, yeah, uh, it's a course. beautiful thing. So. Yeah, yeah. All right. Is, is DEF CON the only band playing? Uh, well, Defcon's going to play, but we got uh, a lot of musicians coming in. The guys from okay. Damage and uh, some other musicians that were gotcha. all connected with this with this with this beautiful man, and uh, yeah. we're going to make a, a great show and a great tribute. And we're going to try to raise a little money, maybe for uh, yeah, maybe his daughter because you know he's a young daughter and stuff like that. I mean, he died. He, he, I don't think he was. He just. I think he just turned fifty last year. Oh no, so kidding! Was, wow. Yeah. So he's, he was young. Well, that's. Oh, that's very but sad to I, hear. I, I, I met him. I met him when he was like, say, like twenty, and I, I'm like, uh, I'm like three or four years older than him. So, no, that's that's a close friend for a lot of years. Yeah, yeah. No, obviously, yeah. Well, all right, Scumpy. Well, very, very sad to hear that, but uh, but you know, we do appreciate the call. And uh, April sixth at the Davian, very good. April sixth, yeah, the Johnny Bones tribute. Come on, let's uh, let's celebrate his life, not his uh, Mona's death. Okay, right. absolutely. Um, uh, Mona's death this uh, Mona's death this week, and then uh, April sixth comes on. We're gonna we're gonna celebrate his life because he was a uh, he was you know like a Tibbets kind of guy. I mean, always happy, yeah, laughing, yeah. And joking and joking, and, and just just a, a ball of energy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, Scumpy. All right. Sorry to hear that. All but, right, but th- I love. Thank I you love you, Matt, man. Love you, man. All right, you too, brother. Take Peace. care. Thank you for the call. Rock on. All right, bye bye. All right, the great uh, Jeff Scumpy Lorenz. I I remember uh, hearing of of the band uh, Damage. I you know I I uh, never saw them play or anything, and I and uh, I didn't know this gentleman who passed away. But oh, that's too bad. And he, geez, he wasn't even fifty. Oh uh, yikes! Well, that's that's terrible. Very sorry to hear that. But April sixth at the Davian. Uh, sounds like it's going to be a good show. And, and, you know, like Scumpy said, you know, you, you, you mourn and then it's a, you know, you, you celebrate his life and his legacy, you know, which is, I, I think the, the right way to look at it. Uh, let's see, uh, in the Facebook live chat, hello to, I see Jenny in there, uh, Christian Cunard, uh, Renee Frazier or Fraser, if I'm saying that correctly. And a hello to Peter White, of course, from the morning show, uh, with Peter White. And uh, let's see. So we've got, oh, by the way, we do have someone who is going to be, that reminds me, someone who I think is going to be stopping in. We'll see if he makes it. <laughs> a little, little surprise guest we'll probably have. Uh, Jenny says, may his memory uh, be for a blessing. Yes, absolutely. Uh, let's see. So a uh, bunch of stuff. Oh, you know what? I was going to play, and then I had an issue with the uh the audio that mediaite is just the uh worst website in the world as far as their uh I know I've complained about this before but a lot of these websites instead of just embedding YouTube in their sites they insist on having their own uh customized players in their sites and uh the the customized players are are just uh, awful <laughs> and mediaite I know I complain about it all the time but Television stations do that, too. Like, there's a certain television... You know who I mean. There's a certain television station uh, in the area that just, uh, you know, you go to load the player, and, it you know, it's uh, your browser all of a sudden doesn't know what's happening, and, oh, it's just awful. Just use YouTube or Vimeo if you don't want to use YouTube. Damn it. Okay. Uh, This is... uh, uh, Trump had some comments about uh, the presumptive 2020 nominee for the Democrats, Beto O'Rourke. 
uh, of Texas. No, I'm kidding. I, I have no idea if Beto O'Rourke's going to be the nominee. If uh, if I were a betting man, I would say no. But Beto does continue, even though he lost uh, to Ted Cruz, just by virtue of, in the state of Texas, managing to come surprisingly close. I mean, that literally could have gone either way, that race. That's how close he came. But uh, he has announced he is running for president, and Trump had some interesting comments and might be a little bit of a pot kettle black uh, moment here. But uh, let's see if this will play now. With us. Well, I think he's got a lot of hand movement. I've never seen so much hand movement. I said, is he crazy or is that just the way he acts? So uh, I've never seen hand movement. I watched him a little while this morning doing, I assume it was some kind of a news conference. Uh, and I've actually never seen anything quite like it. Study it. I'm sure you'll agree. Oh, Fred Bonig uh, from the DailyRipple.org uh, joins us in the Facebook live chat. He says, uh, sending a big howdy from Texas. Fred is, of course, at South by Southwest uh, this week. Uh, Fred, feel free to give us a call and, and check in. would love to hear how things are going there. Uh, 603-250-6007 is the number. 603 250 Six oh oh seven. I want to talk about this um, this weird Melania story, <laughs> but I wanna I want to wait and see if our uh, our potential guest uh, gets here. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna save that. And if you're and if you, it, you know if you're thinking you might know who's coming in, um, uh, you, that probably gives it away. That's a big hint. Yes, Alex Jones, ladies and gentlemen. I'll just go ahead and spill the beans. Alex Jones might be joining us uh, here in the studio. <laughs> no, uh, I'm kidding. It's not Alex Jones. Okay, um, let's see. But uh, we should do... Oh, we got to do the George Conway thing. George Conway uh, is a gentleman whom I've talked about on the show many times. I am fascinated by him, by uh, the dynamic of of what he does because George Conway, if you're not familiar with him and if you're a regular listener, you've heard of me, uh, you've heard me talk of him, but um, he is the husband of a certain uh, Kellyanne Conway who you might be familiar with. Kellyanne Conway, of course, who brought us uh, alternative facts and introduced that phrase into the American lexicon and so forth. Uh, So George Conway, a former lawyer for the department of justice, who I think at one point had been offered a spot as an attorney in the Trump administration and uh, went on a podcast and said, yeah, that particular dumpster fire I don't think I want to be involved in. And, of course, it's always fascinating when George Conway says these very damning things about Trump. He's extremely critical of Trump, not for ideological reasons. Uh, George Conway is a Republican, a uh, lifelong Republican, conservative guy. Uh, and does agree with Trump on most of his policies, from what I understand. But he's very critical of Trump for a lot of other reasons. And I think he's, I think Conway is pretty convinced that uh, Trump is guilty of obstruction of justice and whatnot. And it's just, you know, you have to wonder what it's like at night at home uh, with uh, Kellyanne, <laughs> you know, and, and the arguments they may or may not get into. It's, uh, Difficult to even fathom the dynamic of their marriage because this is a little different than I mean, look, you have uh, mixed marriages, if you will. (laughs) And in this uh, context, I just mean marriages where maybe you have a Republican and a Democrat who are married to each other. Uh, And, uh, you know, people will sometimes mention um, Mary Madeline and uh, what's his name there? The Rage and Cage and James Carville, who, of course, uh, worked on the uh, the uh, Bill Clinton campaign. That's where he first uh, became famous. And Mary Madeline, who worked for, did she work for the Reagan administration? Anyway, um, you know, they, over the years, I, I think they, they've both kind of receded from the spotlight. But they, over the years, would go on all these television shows together and, and argue and bicker about politics. But what's different about George Conway and Kellyanne Conway is Kellyanne Conway right now works for the president of the United States. So we'll get to this late, uh, this latest batch of tweets from George Conway condemning his wife's boss uh, in a moment. But we do have a call. So we'll get to this late, uh, Please, latest batch of you got to turn your radio down. George Conway condemning his wife's boss. 
You got to turn your radio down. Oh, uh, it's somebody doing a bit, but that's really obnoxious to listen to <laughs> when the radio is blasting in the background because we're on a delay. That's just that's unlistenable. Uh, feel free to call back. Like we don't know who that was calling just now. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so uh, media I'd re- Oh, by the way, too, uh, I wonder about this. And I know I've brought this up before, and I'm not the first person to wonder. Remember that anonymous op-ed from months ago now that everyone's kind of forgotten about because everything moves so fast in this Trump administration news cycle that things get forgotten about? Uh, when uh, people were speculating, who is it who wrote the anonymous op-ed saying, you know, I'm part of the resistance and, you know, we're trying to keep Trump from ruining everything or whatever. And uh, I still think it was Dan Coates, national security director. That's that's my first uh, guess. But um, some suspected, uh, speculated that it might, in fact, be Kellyanne Conway. And that would kind of explain what the dynamic really is with she and her husband if you know, there's no conflict there, right? In theory, if she's actually the one who wrote the anonymous op-ed, she's the one actually acting as the resistance or part of the resistance, quote unquote. But anyway, so this is the newest from Mediaite on this. George Conway lights up Trump. A serious inquiry is needed on his condition of mind. Yes, this ongoing uh, theory that the president has some sort of uh, dementia or pre-dementia Uh, Cognitive impairment. Well, wouldn't be the first time. There is precedent for that, uh, of course, uh, with uh, Ronald Reagan, uh, Ronald Wilson Reagan. Of course, many suspect uh, that during his second term, he was uh, already suffering from Alzheimer's. Uh, But uh, and I've talked about this on the show. So Mediaite reports uh, George Conway can't stop and won't stop. Uh, absolutely lighting up President Donald Trump on Twitter. His latest tweet storm on Wednesday night was truly stunning. In it, the husband of White House Counselor Kellyanne Conway questioned the sanity of his wife's boss, and uh, he tweeted, Whether or not impeachment is in order, a serious inquiry needs to be made about this man's condition of mind. And then he went on to... uh, he went on to elaborate about uh, what he was speaking about. But here, let's grab this. Oh, and nobody there. Okay. Uh, so here's, uh, here's a bunch of his tweets in, in uh, succession, just kind of one right after another. Uh, like I said, a tweet storm similar to the uh, tweet storms uh, that our president uh, likes to go on. He tweeted, have we ever seen this degree of brazen pathological mendacity in American public life? One day he makes a harmless slip of the tongue, something only mentally balanced, something any mentally balanced person would laugh off. Then he tweeted, but instead he lies about it. He denies what the world can see on videotape. Even his donors and supporters wonder what is wrong with him. Why would he feel compelled to tell such an absurd lie? And then he clarifies, and you can probably already guess what it is, but then he clarifies in the next tweet what incident he is Speaking about specifically, he tweets, but one lie on any subject is never enough for Donald Trump. So he next tells a different lie. Yes, I omitted a word, but to save time, a ridiculous assertion, of course. He really said Tim Apple instead of Tim Cook of Apple to save, quote, a third of a second. (laughs) Then he tweeted, it's ridiculous. It was irrelevant to the charges at hand. Not that there was no. Oh, did I miss something here? I think media I missed something in this article. All right, but so before we go on to the next, uh, the next thing, because the tweet storm continues, but he kind of changes subjects, and it looks like media I left out a tweet here. But I talked about this on the show the other day. You know, he refers to Tim Cook as Tim Apple, and. You know, people noticed it, but it's like I explained the other day. The only reason it's a big, it's not a big deal because he slipped and said Tim Apple instead of Tim Cook of Apple or simply Tim Cook, you know, but the reason it's, the reason people seize on it is because it's so predictable. You know, because you've seen the pattern of behavior, if you've seen the pattern of behavior, you know, unless, you know, Trump is your personal hero and you simply cannot accept that there's a pattern here. 
that you, it's fairly predictable, and, and this is exactly what happened. He denies that he made a mistake. He, he literally cannot accept that he or acknowledge that he made a mistake. Like any normal person would do. Any normal person, as George Conway pointed out in that tweet, would just say, oh, yeah, I, I, I apologize. I meant to say Tim Cook or Tim Cook of Apple, and it came out Tim Apple. That's what any normal human would do. But instead, he first, he claims that he actually did say Tim Cook. That literally is what he was saying, and that this whole thing was fake news. It's the media out to get him again. He actually said Tim Cook of Apple. He just said it so fast that you didn't hear the Cook part. And the media was intentionally ignoring that he did say Cook just to make him look bad. It's all fake news. I mean, that literally is what he was saying initially. And then he changed it, as George Conway refers to in the tweet. He then changed it to, uh, no, I just, um, I was speaking in shorthand. So instead of saying Tim Cook of Apple, I just said Tim Apple to uh, to save time and words. His exact words, to save time and words. I guess he was in a big hurry. You know, and it's it's just, it's bizarre, it really is bizarre. And again, I know if you're someone who's all rah-rah about Trump, it's difficult to accept that anything this man does is strange. But that is very, very strange. And there's other examples of this where the slightest mistake he cannot acknowledge. And it's all, no, someone doctored the tape. Or, By the way, and this is something I didn't bring up the other day. Did you know? Because a certain friend of mine... And this was an off-air, this was around an off-air interaction, so I'm not going to say who it was. But a certain friend, someone who's been on the show, a certain friend of mine back when, remember when Trump made fun of, how could you forget, when Trump made fun of that reporter with the disability and did so in a very immature way with his own, you know, he, he he's making fun of Beto O'Rourke in his hand motions, right? Trump did, did something that if I had done when I was a kid, I would have gotten smacked for making fun of somebody in that way. We all know what I'm talking about. Not only does Trump deny that he ever made fun of that reporter with the disability, even though the videotape clearly shows him doing exactly that, clearly mocking him. There is, and there, there's probably more than one, but I know of at least one because someone went out to went out of his way to send it to me, send me the link at the time. On YouTube, there's an entire documentary. I mean, not like a full-length two-hour documentary, but there's a YouTube video where the the guy who put it together goes to great lengths and twists and cons- and contorts himself into building a case based on other examples other visual examples of Trump making fun of people and tries to say oh no he always does that when he makes fun of people he always does weird hand motions like that that's his thing he wasn't mocking and making fun of a disabled reporter he always does that. And the friend of mine who sent me this link, of course, that was good enough for him. And I I tried to watch a little bit of the video. I couldn't get that far because, look, I'm as open-minded as anybody. But it's just stupid. I, I, you know, and... I, You want to talk about Trump derangement syndrome, you know, because everybody who loves Trump says everybody who doesn't love Trump has some sort of Trump derangement syndrome. And by the way, if you even if you do love Trump, but you uh, (laughs) have an independent thought in your head at some point and criticize him about, you know, well, one particular policy that you don't agree with, automatically you're off the team. You have Trump derangement syndrome. You should love everything he does and never question or criticize anything. Well, I'll tell you what, I think Trump derangement syndrome is real. What Trump derangement syndrome really is, is where you will blindly follow this man and buy into everything that he tells you. (laughs) Trump derangement syndrome is where this is this is I'm going to reframe it. Trump derangement syndrome is where you can look with your own eyes directly at a screen seeing him mocking a disabled reporter and convince yourself that's not what's actually happening. (laughs) That is 
my idea of Trump derangement syndrome because you are so in love with this man and he is your hero (laughs) and you must protect him and defend him even when he does something that when I was a kid, I mean, I went to a Catholic school growing up from grade two to grade eight. I would have gotten my ass paddled by the principal if I had done what Trump did, if I had behaved that way and mocked a disabled person or anyone else in that manner. But if you are a supporter of the president, you can somehow look directly at that video of him doing that and be perfectly fine with it. Because Fox News told you, no, that's not what he was doing. And who are you going to believe? Fox News or your own lying eyes? (laughs) That's Trump derangement syndrome. Um, so anyway, uh, and maybe that's why Trump just, is it possible? Is it possible that Trump isn't mentally ill, as George Conway is suggesting, doesn't have dementia, nothing like that, nothing wrong with him at all? Is it possible that he just, he knows? Like he himself acknowledged, remember, he made the comment during the campaign, he could shoot somebody in the middle of Fifth Avenue, not lose a single supporter, which is literally true. If he actually did shoot someone in the middle of Fifth Avenue, uh, most Republicans I know would probably be like, well, obviously the guy deserved it or something, right? <laughs> um, you know, and, and nothing about the facts of it or anything would matter. Um But is it possible that he just lies so freely because he knows that his supporters will believe whatever he says? Again, obviously, I mean, I'm sure most Republicans I know when when Trump says, no, 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 I did say Tim Cook of Apple. You just didn't hear the Cook part because I was speaking so fast. You know, they all say, oh, yeah, obviously that's true, (laughs) even though that's clearly not true. You know, and and that's his path to reelection. As long as those people are with him, that's why I always say some people are really surprised when I say this. I actually do believe that he has an excellent chance of winning a second term. You know, because you look at the polling data, it's really really hard for him to lose any support, no matter how much he lies. Nobody, you know. It, it doesn't matter. And I, the, the greatest example, and I know I've, I've mentioned this on the show before, but the greatest example I've seen of this is you have these um, you have these farmers out in the Midwest. And, you know, I, I, I read this piece online about, you know, they're they're interviewing these farmers who because of Trump's policy, Trump's tariffs policy, uh, you have these farmers who are being rapidly just wiped out of, of business. They're being put out of business by this trade war. And that's why trade wars are very dangerous and should not be entered into recklessly. Um, so these people are literally having their lives destroyed. Their business is ruined. Their livelihoods taken away from them. People who've had farms for decades. But they voted for Trump. And what happens when you ask these people... Well, how do you feel about the president now? And their attitude is, well, you know, I I voted for him. I support him. I mean, yeah, I just had my life completely destroyed, but he's rich. He must know something I don't. You know, I guess he knows what he's doing. Must be a reason. Or maybe this was God's will. (laughs) Sometimes some of that gets in there, too. I love that stuff. (laughs) But that's but, but see that's what I mean. That's why I say, you know, unless impeachment happens, which I'm very very skeptical about. Think about I mean, like I said, it's the greatest example of mass hypnosis I've ever seen in my life. A few people, a few Republicans didn't fall for it, like George Conway. George Conway, staunch Republican, and actually agrees with probably ninety percent of Trump's policies. 
but is just worried that he's incompetent. Really, that that's he never criticizes Trump on on policy grounds. He criticizes him on competency and uh, concern that he may in fact be a criminal. And this is a former Department of Justice lawyer who is very worried about that and that he did commit um, obstruction of justice and so forth. But think about this. How can Trump possibly lose if he is, I mean, and again, he inspires loyalty among his followers that Ronald Wilson Reagan would have been envious of. Saint Reagan, right, the patron saint of conservatism in this country. Donald Trump, when you look at these farmers who they'll support him no matter what, Donald Trump can literally destroy your life with his policies and you'll still support him. In my mind, that makes him unbeatable. All he has to do, all he has to do is convince everybody who voted for him the first time to vote for him again. And they will. They literally will. So electorally, I don't see why, you know, I I mean, unless the maybe the one thing that could change is uh, maybe this time there will be a Democratic nominee who's more uh, you know, favorable amongst voters than Hillary, right? Who will help drive out the vote. And maybe this nominee, in fact, I guarantee you, this nominee will have learned something from 2016 and will actually go and campaign in Wisconsin, for example, in Ohio, but in Pennsylvania. But here's here's the thing, though. Electorally, because of the Electoral College... There's no reason with with any other president, I would be thinking, well, okay, so A, B, C, and D are things that have gone right and continue to go right. But, uh, you know, X, Y, and Z are some real concerns about this guy. And plus, I don't want to put this energy out there, but realistically, we are due for some sort of economic downturn. If not a full recession, there's going to be a slowdown. But I don't think any of it matters. I think the I I actually believe the economy could fall into the toilet and it won't matter because Trump somehow has convinced everybody who voted for him that I don't know that he's not that he's perfect, but that he's sort of infallible like the pope, you know. I, that's something I was uh, taught growing up. Like I said, I went to a Catholic school from grade two to grade eight. So, you know, we were taught in Catholicism, in Catholicism, you're taught that the Pope is infallible. Not that he's perfect. There's a difference. No one is perfect. But you're taught that he's infallible in, in terms of, I guess, his, you know, decisions that he makes, his papal decrees, if that's even. I'm very much a lapsed Catholic, so I don't even know if I'm using the right terminology, you know. The things he says in speeches when he travels around in the Pope Mobile and waves at everyone and says what he says. Um, uh, I know, and, and I do know this that even within uh, Catholicism, there's a lot of theological uh, debate over the uh, fallibility or infallibility of the Pope. But um, so I, I, I think I think his supporters actually, to be fair, I want to be, make sure I'm being fair here. I think they they do generally regard him as being imperfect. He's not a perfect man. He's got a lot of flaws, but he is sort of infallible in the sense that, I mean, look, you've got the the far right, uh, you know, the evangelical right, who believes that God chose him. And and they really do. There's polling data that shows, by the way, because if we're really being honest about it, it's not just the far evangelical right that believes that. It's it's a very large swath. I've seen some polling data that shows a very large swath of conservatives believe that Trump was literally chosen by God to save us from, I guess, all the terrible damage that uh, was done by Barack Obama. You know, because Obama just ruined the country, which was predictable. I mean, you know, 
eight years of Sharia law, for one thing. Just off, I'm being sarcastic, obviously, but um, I didn't personally notice the country being ruined. Uh, under Barack Obama. And to be fair, I also don't particularly notice the country being ruined under Trump <laughs> either. You know, uh, I think it takes it probably takes a lot to quote unquote ruin the country. Uh, I don't think having someone in the White House whom I disagree with uh, is automatically the country being ruined. But I'll see on social media, I'll see Republicans talk about how Barack Obama ruined the country. Well, if Barack Obama ruined the country, then in theory there wouldn't be anything left for Trump to make great again if the country had already been ruined. (laughs) What does that mean, ruined? Like, everybody speaks so hyperbolically, you know? I don't don't even know what that's supposed to mean, ruin the country. Because we have gay marriage now? Is that... Is to a, in in a conservative's mind is that does that constitute ruining the country? Because we'll allow two dudes to get married. Oh my God, the country is ruined. Oh no, how terrible! Or at the very least, the institution of marriage has been completely destroyed. <laughs> I, I just I'm always fascinated by that when I see uh, Republicans on social media talking about how Obama ruined the country, and that's why Trump has to make America great again. Because under eight years of Obama, uh, I guess uh, it, it just descended into some, well, what Trump might describe as some s <laughs> you know, some third world uh, s country, right? Is that what we, uh, is that what we became under Obama? Um, let's see. All right, let's get back to this. So George Conway. So the other thing, again, they they appear to have. Um, left out a tweet in this article on Mediaite, but uh, Conway also was commenting on um, uh, one of the judges in the Manafort case, I, I guess the one that gave him the uh, the light sentence initially and said, you know, an otherwise blameless life and whatnot. Um, you know, Trump claimed a victory in that and said, well, you know, Manafort only getting 47 months, that clears Trump of any wrongdoing and proves that there's no collusion, which is uh, kind of what Trump does. He's done that every step of the way, right? Anytime anything doesn't go uh, horribly against him in some way, he claims victory and says this this exonerates him, uh, which is, of course, patently untrue. And by the way, over the course of Manafort's trial, we did learn that, yes, there was direct collusion with the Trump campaign and the Russians. Uh, you know, Manafort's very sloppy attorneys released documents that were not correctly redacted <laughs> that reveal that, yes, Paul Manafort was directly colluding with the Russians during the Trump campaign when Paul Manafort was the chairman of the campaign for that, what was it, four months over that summer? Of course, Trump likes to make it sound like uh, Manafort was just there for a, t- a cup of coffee. So responding to Trump's tweet about how uh, Manafort, uh, Manafort's light sentence exonerates Trump, uh, Conway tweeted, uh, ridiculous because it was irrelevant to the charges at hand, not that there was no proof of collusion, just that whether there was uh, or wasn't was irrelevant to the proceedings at hand. And yet he lies again, a blatant lie about what the judge said in open court. Then he tweeted, again, pathological. It's not rational because it's a lie that no reasonable person would believe. It undermines his credibility. It's self-defeating. Then he tweeted, but these are, are just two of how many examples? Hundreds? Thousands? Is it possible to count? At any level of government in this country, in any party, we have Have we ever seen anything like this? It's beyond politics. It's nuts. It's a disorder. And then he tweeted, whether or not impeachment is in order, a serious inquiry needs to be made about this man's condition of mind. Now, I'm going to defend Trump a little bit here, believe it or not, (laughs) because one of the things that we're seeing a lot on social media in terms of Trump's uh, state of mind is there's this theory that he's suffering from dementia and uh, specifically, oh, hello to uh, Dr. Jeff Cassell, who joins us in the Facebook live chat. And specifically, uh, sundowners, which is apparently the way dementia works is 
um, at night it gets worse. So someone with some sort of cognitive uh, deterioration will have an easier time during the day, but once the sun goes down, things become more challenging. And the people who put together... I know it doesn't sound... I know I said I'm going to defend Trump a little bit. It's coming. The people who put... Because I want to be fair. The people who put together these videos... It's very easy, by the way, to find videos of uh, compilations on YouTube of examples uh, that, that people have cobbled together of where Trump seems very confused. Now, some of that, yeah, there's one, the most damning one to me is that there's one where he's he's getting off of Air Force One, and instead of getting into the presidential limo, he just sort of wanders off and looks like he's wandering aimlessly, just kind of lost. That one, I, I, that particular one I remember seeing and going, oh, wow, that that looks bad. A lot of them, however, that I see in these videos, yeah, it's him confused or whatever, but uh, not to me. But I'm not a, a professional either in this area. But some of them I think, yeah, yeah that could be dementia or that could just be uh, a 72-year-old man who's working harder than he ever has in his life because he didn't expect to win, he didn't expect to be president and he's and he's known for not sleeping a lot and he's just kind of exhausted. You know, and he's just making little mistakes. The sundowners part of it I'm skeptical of because and again, a lot of the um a lot of these the examples used in these videos are things that happen at night. Um oh, you know a recent example that I saw and I even tweeted or I, I Facebooked about it, I said, uh, geez, maybe it really is time for the 25th Amendment, is that one where he's sitting at the desk in the Oval Office and he's talking to the media and he starts just kind of droning on about this <laughs> this idea that he has to have uh, an, a new annual tradition. And by the way, it, this had nothing to do with anything else that was going on. All of a sudden he just starts droning on about he wants to have a new annual tradition every year for the 4th of July he wants to have in Washington, D.C., a parade and fireworks. <laughs> and by the way, in case you didn't know, this is already a thing. <laughs> Every year in Washington, D.C., as one would expect, they have a parade and fireworks. Oh, hello to uh, Alex O'Connor, who joins us in the Facebook live chat. So that's already a thing. But Trump's sitting there talking about it like this is this idea that he just had. You know, that, that, that we're going to do this every year. And, and we might even make it an annual tradition. And if you don't know, now you know. And when he's talking about it, I just remember watching that particular clip and thinking, okay, he's really confused. The, this is definitely not normal. He's lost. And then as he's talking... He kind of shifts a little bit, and the, almost like he suddenly remembers, like something in his mind. He realizes that we already do this, and then suddenly he's going, but you know, the great thing, I should find, maybe during the break I'll find the actual clip. He's like, but you know, the great thing is, we already have fireworks, so it wouldn't cost us anything extra to do the fireworks. <laughs> That clip I saw, and I thought, yeah, he's, he has dementia. Okay. The thing about the Sundowners that makes me skeptical is every year he manages to do uh, a State of the Union address at 9 o'clock at night. And when he does the State of the Union, that is by far, and the bar here is very low, but that is by far in my opinion, when he manages to comport himself in the most presidential manner and the most clear-minded manner that he's capable of. Um, and it's the one thing that makes me really skeptical about this whole sundowners idea. Because if he really does have sundowners, in theory, when he goes to give the State of the Union at 9 o'clock at night, and, I know, and again, I know it's only once a year, so maybe maybe he's just been lucky on this. And again, I am far I, I, I'm no expert on this, but in theory, if he if he was suffering from sundowners, when he goes to give that speech, he would th there would be some sort of trouble. But there isn't. 
He gets through it just fine. He seems con- uh, confident. He seems competent. Uh, he doesn't even really stumble on his words at all. You know, he stands there and reads the teleprompter. And you might say, well, Matt, yeah, but he is just standing there reading a teleprompter. So what does that prove? And I'm saying it doesn't prove anything in either direction. I'm just saying um, it, it just seems to me, I'd be curious to know what uh, Dr. Cassell thinks about this because he he is, uh, uh, you know, in, in the field, so to speak. But it just seems to me that, um, I mean, if if here's the thing, if the, if it were a risk, if he were suffering from sundowners, that would make it a risk that when he goes to give the State of the Union, something could severely go wrong, and I would think that those around him would say, okay. This could go bad. Maybe we do need to do something and then maybe start talking about the 25th Amendment. Because if Trump went to give the State of the Union and then all of a sudden in the middle of it, he starts, you know, he stops reading the teleprompter and gets confused and starts going on about something else like he does at these, you know, like he did at the the CPAC rally where he talked for two hours. And I, I guess he was off script more than on script. He was just kind of freestyling it, just like he does at his campaign campaign rallies. That's what he started doing at CPAC. But people try to use that, too, as an example of why he might be suffering from dementia, these rambling speeches that just go all over the place. And uh, I, I'm, I definitely reject that as evidence. Uh, I think he does that because that's what his audience wants, and that's his favorite part of this whole thing. I've never gotten the sense from watching him that he enjoys being president, but he loves campaigning. He loves being in front of a crowd. He is an entertainer. And and he loves that, you know. I mean, he's a professional wrestling character. And I don't mean that, you know, hyperbolically. I mean that literally. He's in the WWE Hall of Fame in the celebrity wing because he got involved in several storylines over the years. For real. <laughs> If you're a wrestling fan, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not, you don't. But, you know, and and I mean, that's really his thing. He loves to entertain. So his long rambling speeches, I don't think, are indicative of anything. Um, and I'm skeptical about the sundowners. Um, but there are other bits of evidence that do concern me. And like I said, one of them is that clip where he starts droning on about this this new tradition that he wants to have in D.C. every 4th of July. <laughs> what did he call it? A salute to America? <laughs> I think he called it. We don't need to do that. We already have something. It's called the 4th of July or Independence Day. <laughs> we're going to have a we're going to have a salute to America. <laughs> it's really strange, but anyway, Uh, it is the top of the hour, so we should probably take a break and I should probably play something and, uh, yeah, I know what I'm going to play. There's this, um, no, you know what? I'm not going to play that. I'm going to save that in case our guest arrives, our prospective guest. Um, well here, I know what we'll play. We'll do a little, uh, Randy Rainbow because, uh, This is the uh, Cell Block Tango. We'll play this in honor of uh, white-collar criminal Paul Manafort. (laughs) Uh, And plus, I I love love, uh, Randy Rainbow. Great stuff. You're listening to Matt Connerton Unleashed. We are live on WMNH 95.3 FM. More to come. Trump. Six. Flip. Huckabee Muller. And now, low energy Randy Rainbow in his stupid rendition of the Cell Block Django. No collusion. Trump. Six. Flip. Cuckoo. Huckabee Muller. Trump. Six. Flip. Huckabee Muller. Trump. Six. You 
you guessed it, they got arrested. And now he's losing his freaking mind from six feet. Talk to Big Muller. The greatest witch hunt in history has dropped houses on six of the president's personal associates. So far. Including Roger Stone, who's been indicted on multiple charges, including lying, obstructing justice, witness tampering, and lacking basic fashion sense. Six. Before Roger came Mike Flynn, George Papadopoulos, and Rick Gates. Then on the same day Michael Cohen pleaded guilty, Donald Trump's campaign chairman Paul Manafort was convicted on eight felony counts, only because on the other 10 counts, the jury was hung. And incidentally, the only thing in that sentence that will ever be described as hung. <laughs> they had it coming. They had it coming. They got from Machiavelli and Look it up. Just wait and see next. Who will it be next? Oh God, I'll laugh if it's Kelly and drum six. Flip. You know how people have these little habits that get you down? Like cracking their knuckles or implicating you in a criminal conspiracy to mislead the American people in order to influence an election? <laughs> DT hates that. So it's no wonder that he's violated Title 18 United States Code 1512 by intimidating witnesses like his former fixer who's already cooperating with the feds. And there's no telling who might flip on Donald next. Flip. Thank God he can at least count on the loyalty of his longtime pal Roger Stone who swears he would never do his boo like that. I mean, imagine a fine, upstanding, delusional, rat bastard con artist and self-described dirty trickster who dresses like a Dick Tracy villain and idolizes Richard Nixon going back on his word in an act of self-interest? I mean, <laughs> I really wouldn't worry about it, Donald. He has it coming. He has it coming. He better find a hiding place. He's changing color. Cause here comes Muller At least his jumpsuit will match his face oh, It's lonely being individual one these days Even his own wife is starting to turn on him Luckily he has the genuine support of true and unbiased sycophantic media whores Like Giuliani And press secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders Sarah Let's cut the shit. Huckabee. This is now the sixth person directly connected to the president in the Mueller investigation. What is your reaction? Are you scared? You look scared. Real simple. This has nothing to do with the president and certainly nothing to do with the White House. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm sure you guys are totally fine. <laughs> she has it coming. They have it coming. While Giuliani's cracking jokes. <laughs> Is it collusion or just the hope? President Trump is absolutely right. This is a witch hunt. The dirty bomb. The dirty bomb. 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 She has it come. She has it come. They have it come. She has it. Wait, just let Melania go free. Girl's been through enough. But she's complicit. So she'll just visit. I hope for her sake, not conjugally. Trump. Six. Flip. Huckabee. Muller. No collusion. I know, baby. Everybody, we are well into hour number two. Matt Connerton unleashed in the afternoon live on WMNH 95.3 FM here in downtown Manchester, New Hampshire. I've got the window wide open, by the way. It's it was really warm in here when I got here, which uh, no complaints. I love spring. And uh, I think in this part of the room, it, it tends to be particularly warm because we've got all the equipment over here. But, uh, yeah, it was uh, it was a little little toasty. Uh, let's see. Uh, 603-250-6007 is the number to call. 603-250-6007. Anytime in the next uh, 40 minutes or so. Uh, it is Thursday, so, you know, we'll be uh, we'll be wrapping up uh, close to the top of the hour. And then uh, the weekly die-on is coming up next at 6 p.m. 
right here on WMNH 95.3 FM, as you can hear every week, Ben and Daryl die on. They usually pop in a little early here on the show. Um, let's see. There is uh, some news uh, that just happened. This was expected to happen, though. It's not a big surprise, but TheHill.com reporting that the Senate has rejected the border declaration in major rebuke of Trump. Oh, my goodness. Um, yeah, I mean, we kind of knew this was coming. Um, you know, they were able to, to peel off enough Republicans who uh, didn't uh, particularly agree with using that kind of power in this particular way. And and part of the their concern is, well, if uh, if the president can do an executive order and and or do a, an emergency declaration for this, what's to prevent if we get a Democrat in the White House in 2020? What's to prevent them from doing an emergency declaration on something like uh, climate change, you know, or uh, wanting to do something about guns, etc. But it says here uh, the the. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Senate voted today to nix President Trump's national emergency declaration to construct the U.S.-Mexico border wall, setting up the first veto battle with the White House. Senators voted 59 to 41 to pass the resolution of disapproval blocking Trump's declaration, underscoring the broad base of concern over Trump's actions within the Republican caucus. Twelve GOP senators broke rank and voted with all the Democrats. So, uh, yeah, so that's... um. That's a a bigger number. You know, I said, uh, I think I said initially seven uh, were expected to. Uh, Oh, Bill Muckler is in the Facebook live chat. He says, hi, Matt and Jenny. What a great uh, chat we had today. Just got back from errands, et cetera. Yeah, as soon as I have the link for it, uh, I'll share it out. Uh, Jenny was interviewed uh, by Bill Muckler on his program today. And I'll let you know uh, once that's available. Uh, Bill Muckler, of course, was a guest on the show uh, last week. We were talking about, um, you know, he's an author and we were talking about his book. And Bill has his own show that he does online. And uh, he had Jenny on that uh, earlier. So and um, I was there for for part of it. I was uh, in the next room and it it sounded like it went very, very well. So I look forward to being able to watch the uh, the entire uh, discussion online. Um. So 12 GOP senators broke rank and voted with all the Democrats. The measure passed the House last month, 245 to 182. The resolution now heads to Trump's desk, where he is expected to use the first veto of his presidency to defeat it. Neither chamber has the votes to override the president, who tweeted shortly after the vote was closed. (laughs) He's already tweeting veto with an exclamation point. Uh, Trump made an 11th hour plea to Republican senators reiterating the pledge to veto the resolution and signaling he could be open to future changes uh, to his emergency powers and even accusing uh, Republicans who voted yes of standing with House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. In a string of tweets, also known as a tweet storm, uh, Trump said, Prominent legal scholars agree that our actions to address a national emergency at the southern border and to protect the American people are both constitutional, it's in all caps, and expressly, also in all caps, authorized by Congress, he said. But that argument failed to squash the momentum behind the resolution, which garnered support from various factions of the GOP caucus, including moderates, members of leadership, and libertarian-leaning senators. And we have a call. Hi, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed. Who's this? This is Q, and I don't appreciate your program today. Uh Uh-oh, Q, how are you, sir? You you sound upset. Yeah, it's the same spewing of anti-Trump propaganda from one of his chief haters in Manchester, New Hampshire. You should be ashamed of yourself. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, and not only that, you very cleverly are pretending to say that you don't agree that Donald Trump has some kind of mental disorder, some kind of cognitive disorder, but you're planting that thought in the heads <laughs> of your listeners. Well, I, here's the thing, Q. I, uh, I could kind of go either way on that one. I think there might be something wrong with him, but, uh, but I'm not convinced one way or the other. Yeah, well, the cognitive slippage is yours, my friend. Ooh. Not Donald Trump. Donald Trump doesn't suffer from cognitive slippage. 
Donald Trump knows exactly what he's doing. And Donald Trump is going to win again because he's putting up that wall despite what the godless commie scum in the House of Representatives says about stopping his presidential initiative to build the wall to protect America from rapists and drug addicts and criminals. It's not going to work. Well, to be fair, to win again, to be fair, veto that it's over. To be fair, Q, I'm Talk sure some of them win for Donald Trump. I'm sure some of them are good America. people. Yes. Well, now, uh, by the way, and you know, someone asked me the other day if I'm tired of winning, and and I, I have to tell you, Q, I said, uh, frankly, I'm exhausted, absolutely uh, exhausted. But uh, Q, I have a question for you. Uh, do you have any thoughts on this uh, this controversy that uh, Melania Trump may have a body double? Why, why are you even asking me that? What well, difference does that make? Well, I didn't know if you uh, had why any... We, you see, you're, 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 tr- you're, you're losing the argument, so you're trying to get me off track. No. Very I... clever, very typical of people like yourself, the haters. I just thought maybe, you know, because you've talked about how you're, you're deep, you're deep and strong in the government, and uh, I thought maybe you had heard something. You're like, you know, you're in there, you're like undercover working against a deep state or something. You're, you're... Well, there's a lot of propaganda out there, you know, mm-hmm. and I see it all. Mm-hmm. And you've got to sift through it very carefully <clears throat> because, let's face it, one of the most brilliant things Trump ever did is labeling the media for what it really is. They are the fake news. Uh The only media that's telling the truth is Breitbart and Fox News. That's why I'm tuned to that (laughs) 24-7, and that's my opening page on my my laptop. Well, as it should be. What about... And uh, my phone. What about Drudge? Has the the Drudge Report fallen out of favor with you, uh, Q? It's... There's no color on the site. I can't stand mm. to look at a web page without any color. Yeah, it is kind of like now, Craigslist. One time I, I took out my crayons and I started coloring the uh, the screen because I couldn't take it. It's all yes. black and white. Yes, yes. But wouldn't that be fake news if if you're if you're coloring over it with crayons? I couldn't really tell you because I I got off the whole drudge thing very quick. Yes, you know? yes. And uh, and I got to be a little careful because people are watching me here. You know, I'm I'm as deep as you can get into the deep state. You are deep. But uh, there's a lot of paranoia here, you know. I mean, um, there's a lot of paranoia because uh, not everybody's job is safe. Let's face it, Trump has gotten rid of a few bad apples in his administration. <laughs> Thank God. He gets rid of them, He uh, and, and he's gotten rid of some bad apples from his campaign, too. He, uh, he gets rid of them, he sends them off to prison uh, in a certain sense, I guess. Yeah, well, they they resign. Actually, they're fired. You know, I mean, like Flynn. Right. Right. Yes. Yeah, like Manafort. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Manafort, uh, an otherwise blameless life. You know, he only stole fifty million dollars. I feel badly for these white collar criminals treated like, uh, you know, like well, like they're illegal immigrants or something. Well, you know, Trump likes to run a lean machine. Mm. Mm. And so Manafort came to work for him for free. And Manafort had a lot of experience, uh, you know, making people uh, electable, like yes. he did in Ukraine. Right. So, uh, right. you know, yes. Trump's going to need a new Manafort for himself. He's going to get reelected because uh, we had a lot of senators uh, standing up against Donald Trump. I hope they're not planning on running for re-election. Twelve of them, yes. Twelve senators. Yeah. Well, so-called Republicans. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think we need to, you know, have some kind of cognitive expert examine their brains. Not too smart. Eighty-nine <laughs> percent of Republicans backing Donald Trump. Is it only eighty-nine? I don't think they're going to like it too much when these people come up for re-election. Right. Well, you might be onto something there, Q. I, I, I mean, of course, I, I'm onto something. I'm onto everything. I see exactly what's going on here. Yes. And. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, look at the Democratic field. How many are in there now? How many people are running in the Democrat Party? I think there are uh, currently 279 candidates. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, you know? thereabouts, yeah. And so how is anybody going to stand out? Yeah. They didn't learn the lesson of the Republicans back in 2016 as, as a charismatic uh, candidate. Just swept them all aside as if they were dry twigs. 
<laughs> right. Pieces yes. Pieces of hay. He just swept them away. He did. Like they were nothing at all. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Well, I would be interested to see him. Uh, I think uh, Beto O'Rourke would be a very interesting Democratic nominee. He has very large hands, which is probably a function of his being very tall. And uh, Trump, of course, has very small hands. So I think it'd be interesting to see yeah, maybe them. Maybe uh, they can harness some of that arm waving uh, yes. uh, for electrical generation or something. I mean, have you seen the guy, the way the guy. He he's like a cartoon character, just waving his arms around. I I don't know what that's about. Just uh, gesticulating wildly. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't really make any sense. It doesn't work for me. Does it work for you? Well, I mean, I I think it's interesting. I don't think he has much of a chance. Yeah. Well, well I don't think any of them. None, none of them have a chance. Who, who stands out for you? What what Democrat stands out in your mind? Oh boy, that's a tough one, Q. You know, I'm not a. I know you might not believe this, Q, but I'm not a Democrat. I'm an independent. Oh, I know. I know you're not a Democrat. You're a. You're a communist. You're a Bolshevik. I, I, you're a. You're a. That is true. You're a flat earther. <laughs> I. I am. Yes, you're right. You're right about that, Q. In fact, I'm thinking about writing in uh, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. I'm just going to write her in. Oh yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't that be yeah, right? Yeah, the, the communists, in, uh, you know, from the Bronx. Yes. Or Queens or wherever she's from. Uh, the Bronx, Pathetic, I think, you know? yes. Yeah. Pathetic no. how that neighborhood changed. Cause Trump used to live pretty close to there. Uh-huh. You'd think they'd respect a real capitalist, but no. They want a communist to represent them. Yes. But probably the entire district is on welfare or disability. I have uh, no doubt. Yes, that's probably true, Q. Yes. Yes. Well, Trump wants Donald to... Donald uh, Trump is out there. He's working for America. Out, he is out there. And, you know, yes. I mean, I see these people, you know, these Democrats. Well, they pretend to be Democrats. We know what they really mm. are. They're Bolsheviks. Uh, they they say, well, we got we to gotta let all these people in on the southern border. Mm -hmm. I, I don't get it. Why? Mm. Why? Uh, if even 5% of them are bad apples. Right. That's 5% we don't need in the United States, Right. That's true. I mean, it's not like we don't have enough people in this country. God knows we got plenty of people. We got plenty of misfits. Do we really need more? I have heard uh, Q. Uh, I, I I actually I, I saw this on Breitbart that uh, when these caravans approach, uh, at least uh, five percent of those babies uh, have weapons of mass destruction in their diapers, trying to get into the country. Yeah. See, that's the kind of mockery I expect out of you. I would never, you know. Uh, no. I, I mean, you know, let's let's think about that. Mm. The babies coming in. How many of them are there? You know, there's lots of babies. Babies aren't contributing to the U.S. economy. And let's face it, all of these people, they have no education. They can't speak English. They have no skills. But they want to come to America. And let's let them in. Let's wave them all in. So they can be, so we can have another 10 million people on welfare and food stamps and, 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 uh, and subsidized housing. Yeah, let's, let's wreck what's left of the country. Well, I mean, isn't it better, though, to get them into the country while they're young so we can teach them to be good Americans and not be on uh, welfare and yeah, subsidized housing? Yeah, so they can join some that? gang in Brooklyn well. or the south side of Chicago. Well, break into your house and take the few things that you've managed to accumulate. Well, that would be upsetting. Now, 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 when I'm it, sure you give away all your money to the poor, right? <laughs> I am the yeah. poor, and I, I, you know, I've watched your show I, on Facebook. I work in radio. There are so many black and Hispanic faces that come on your Facebook live chat. <laughs> your show, white privilege, pretending to care for the downtrodden. You know, that's your that's your stick. I get it. You remind I me. I totally uh, get it. You remind me of someone. You don't believe when you, a word of what you say. You remind me of someone when you say that. I, someone else said something like that too about uh, about the uh, the lack of uh, diversity on the program. Lack of diversity. Well, that's a nice way of saying it, right? Lack of diversity. I mean, I, I myself am a Pacific Islander, but I never get any credit for it for some reason. Uh, Pacific Islander, like uh, what? What kind of Pacific Islander? Some kind of you from from Fiji. From Australia? Are you some kind of aborigine? I, I, I am from Fiji. That's why I drink all that uh, Fiji water. I wouldn't know anything about that. I know that. All I know is you don't have a kind word to say about Donald Trump. I mean, there's no loyalty in you. You don't care about America. You just care about yourself. You care about uh, 
You, you care about nonsense. You care about the babies coming across the border, being carried by their their mothers, by their fathers, and they're all going to be on welfare. And you're not going to be satisfied until the entire country's on welfare. Well, that but would be uh, Donald Trump. He's never going to be on welfare because this guy knows how to make money. That's true. You know. Yes. Yes. Which is more than I can say for you. That, well, that, you are right about that, Q. My goodness. Well, why don't you get out there and start selling some ads for this program? Well, that's <laughs> that's actually a very good idea. Maybe you can get your cut then, and uh, so you wouldn't have to walk to work or ride your bicycle. Right. Well, you know, it, it's part of the. I I did uh, I did drive until recently, but uh, it's part of the Green New Deal. I'm now. Uh, Actually, I skateboard here. Yeah, great. Yeah, another joke. You know, no, I you don't care about the Green New Deal. Well, uh, you don't care about uh, you don't care about the uh, the rapists coming across the border. You don't care about drugs. You don't care about the condition of the United States, and you don't want to make it great again. You don't want to even make it better. You want to make it worse, so it'll give you more to complain about on your show. Because that's what you are, pal. You are a complainer. Well, it would, and it never stops. Well, it would give me uh, even more stuff to talk about. That's true. Yeah. Well, okay. I'm done with this now. I just I'm just not letting you get away with it. You're you're you're, you're talking bad about America's president, and you do it every day. <laughs> you need to find a new subject. I don't know what you'd do if they actually, in the unlikely event that Trump actually disappeared from the face of the earth. What the hell would you be talking about? Uh, president Pence. Yeah, President Pence. How would you? Yeah, we're all looking forward to that prospect. Well, there you go, Q. I mean, you know. Okay, pal. You know, <laughs> stay on the subject and invite more of that godless commie scum to come on your program. I will. <laughs> I will do that. Thank you, Q. <laughs> bye bye. All right. Always nice to hear from Q. Uh, you know, he's working against the deep state. He's uh, he's deep and hard in our own uh, government, uh, fighting the good fight. Uh, let's see. Oh, hello, uh, Wade Hall in the uh, Facebook live chat. There's a new name I don't think I've seen in there. Hello there, Wade. Uh, let's see. So uh, let's. Oh, this is a weird uh, thing. Um, yeah, we already talked about the the vote against uh, Trump's emergency declaration. This popped up on Mediaite. Uh, former Fox News editor publishes a spiked Stormy Daniels story in response to the report in the New Yorker. Uh, we haven't uh, talked much about Stormy Daniels recently, but uh, she's uh, she's popped up uh, popped up again, getting a rise uh, out of the media. It says uh, the former Fox News editor who killed a story about the alleged affair between Stormy Daniels and Trump published the spiked report in its entirety as part of an effort to prove his editorial decision was not political. Uh, Ken Lacourt, the former head of FoxNews.com, released the unpublished Daniels piece today. It comes a week after a story from The New Yorker's Jane Mayer reported, per a source, uh, the Daniels story was killed by Fox News after Lacourt told the reporter working on it that Rupert Murdoch, quote, wants Donald Trump to win, unquote, the 2016 election. Lacourt has denied making this comment. Uh, or, I'm sorry, Lacourt, not Lacourt. Uh, Lacourt previously made the case for why he spiked the report in a column for Mediaite. LaCourt argued that the story, which outlines information about, about Daniel's claims that have since been reported, was actually spiked for journalistic reasons. Mainly, excuse me, mainly he claimed much of the information included was not confirmed by Daniels and was instead given to Fox News by a questionable online tabloid which published a post about the affair several years earlier. The FoxNews.com story, written by former Fox reporter Diane Falzone, relied on primarily a two-word comment from a rep from Daniels. Um, LaCourt noted outlets like Slate, The Daily Beast, Good Morning America, and The Daily Mail had the same information but did not publish a story about the affair prior to the election. Now, let me uh, let me stop there for a moment. It's, you know, obviously, because let's be fair. Well, I, I know Q doesn't think I'm fair, but I try to be fair. Let's be fair. Or as my dad used to say when I was a kid, I'm a cruel man, but fair. So let's be fair. If not cruel, we'll be fair. Um, <laughs> when, when you have a, a story that is salacious and some of the sources may be dubious... Uh, you do want to be very, very cautious. And 
I'm reminded of back when, um, you know, uh, former senator and former vice presidential candidate um, John Edwards uh, was blanking on his name there for a second because I always want to be careful not to confuse him with John Edward, the uh, the psychic uh, guy. Um, when, when there was that story about he had the affair with Rial Hunter, that originally that story was originally broken by the National Enquirer, which obviously is a supermarket tabloid, and you know that same publication. Uh, often has, you know, pictures of, uh, I remember during the Clinton administration, one of my favorites, I, I still have the mental image of it in my head, Bill Clinton walking arm in arm with an alien who was allegedly giving Bill Clinton some uh, uh, instructions on uh, on running the country because the aliens are really in control. So, um, so you have to be very careful about sources and whatnot. And so if you don't think a source is necessarily credible or may have come from a tabloid, this information may have come from a tabloid or something, then, you know, obviously you want to be cautious. You know, I remember at the time uh, hearing, uh, you know, Republicans complaining that, oh, the media was very slow to react on the uh, on the Edwards story. But uh, the truth is, you know, as I pointed out to people at the time, uh, Brian Williams, who at that time was the anchor at NBC News, can't open uh, the NBC Nightly News by saying, uh, okay, so today the National Enquirer is reporting this. I mean, you just can't do that because that that would immediately the story turned out to be true. But if you say that before you know you're comfortable that it actually is true, then it looks like you're just parroting something that came from the uh, from a supermarket tabloid that would in fact you know be fake news or or would be regarded as fake news because it came from a tabloid. Like I said, in that instance, it turned out to be true. And the Stormy Daniels, all this stuff seems to be true, uh, although I think Trump still technically officially denies it, at least on paper. But uh, but there you go. So it's not inconceivable that that is the reason that the, the story was actually spiked at Fox for uh, journalistic reasons and not uh, ideological ones. But who really knows? We have no way of uh, knowing for sure what's in someone's heart or mind. Uh, but uh, here in the studio now, joining us... Uh, the cast, if you will, of the Weekly Dion. We have uh, Ben and Daryl Dion here. How are you, gentlemen? Good. How are you? Good evening. Good. Nice to see you, Matt. Well, you too. I notice you're uh, you're wearing hats. Why are you wearing hats? You don't usually wear hats, do you? I, I mean, I do sometimes. He always does. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Really? I never noticed. Yeah. He, he usually wears a hat, yeah. I can't wear hats myself. I find them terribly uncomfortable. They make my head hot. I feel like I'm spontaneously combusting if I wear a hat. Well, <laughs> make no mistake about it. You are not a hothead. Thank you. But yeah. I could spontaneously combust. That's a real thing, right? You know, you're just sitting around and all of a sudden you just explode. Poof. Sure. Yeah. I mean, that's terrible. <laughs> yeah. I worry. I live in fear of things like that. Every second of my life, I'm like, this could mm-hmm. be it. I could explode at any moment. I could burst into flame. It could. Yeah. And be especially bad here because, you know, this stuff would catch on fire. And then what would you do? Like, how would you, in theory, like, if it happens right now, how will you even do your show later if, like, uh, everything's ruined because I suddenly burst into flame? Well, you're not going to burst into flames. Well, I hope not. We'll do it on Elm Street. We'll do it uh, just via Facebook Live on my phone. But you don't get to choose. It's spontaneous combustion. It's <laughs> not a scheduled yeah. combustion. I mean, that'd be nice, right, if you could at least choose when you it's going to happen. know when happening. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Or if you wanted to make, a, like, a statement, like the, you know, the protesters, like the monks who do the self-immolation, you know. Right. Like, uh, you know, and then you, you if you could do it that way, too, you could save on having to buy the, the gasoline and put it in a can. You just <laughs> to, just decide, okay, this is Oof. when I'm going to combust, and then you do it, you know, at the right moment or whatever. <sighs> that'd be kind of interesting. Sure. Yes, we had a, a, a Peter and I had an interesting uh, morning yesterday. Oh my God! Did someone spontaneously combust? No, we oh, were good. at the Blarney breakfast. Oh right, very interesting occasion. And uh, I've I think I've been to that once years ago. But how, what what is it exactly? Well, um, it's a, actually it's a fundraiser. Oh, uh, special. Uh, uh, I think it's Special Olympics, uh, perhaps. You might be right. Oh. Uh, but it was interesting, though, this this year, apparently uh, uh, they moved the table from where it used to be for the for the uh, radios, yeah. radio show, yeah. uh, to the way back. So we're sitting there and we basically couldn't see anything. Oh, yeah, it was it was a little strange, but it was a, yeah. it was a fun, uh, uh, fun time. And so far as uh, there was uh, plenty of uh, t- tons of folks. 
Yeah. It's just that we didn't we didn't get an opportunity to interact with any of them. And oh. for the most part, we weren't even on the radio. It was mostly the event. Oh. You know, uh, you know, people introducing you know, and doing a uh, a silent auction. Yeah. In the last half hour, we got to listen to the Willoughbys. Is uh, a Irish singing group. Yeah. So so it was it was uh, it was it so was fun you, in a kind you, of weird kind of way. I was going to say, but you enjoyed all this because none of that sounds <laughs> fun to me. <laughs> it was it was a it was a great event that I don't think we needed to be there. <laughs> right. Okay. All right. So it sounds to me like it kind of sucked, but you're trying to see the glasses half full. Absolutely. Yeah. He's yeah. more positive as he gets older. My dad becomes more positive. Well, that's a good thing. Yeah. I think it's a good thing. Yeah. No. I mean, he almost uh, you know dinged my door the coming here before, but your car door? Yeah. Dinged yeah. it with what? Uh, his mirror. Oh. Yeah. Mirror. Unintentional. <laughs> I don't, under- I don't Unintentional. understand. He thinks he can just swing the door open and uh, oh right, and just, yeah. you know, whatever it hits, it hits. A lot of people are like that; they'll just swing yeah. a door open. Yeah, that's that's my dad over there. Yeah. Stop it. Yeah. yeah, well, you know, but uh, no, that's uh, yeah. I wondered why the because I noticed the show hadn't been posted um, online right away, and then I was almost going to text Peter and be like, "Hey, is everything okay?" I noticed the show's not your, your but that must have been from that day. I think so. Yeah, and I I I got the impression it was going to be replayed at uh, last night, but I don't know if that happened. I hope it was because it sounds like it was terribly exciting. Yeah, <laughs> it was for the folks at the event. I, I, I most definitely. I'm sure it was. Yes, yeah. yes. Well, did you get to eat? Yes, we eventually got some breakfast. Eventually, yes, it was oh. lo- it was uh, it was slow in coming, but we got it, mm. and uh, uh, it was uh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> I won't go any further than that. Oh, uh, and a fun thing was Kyle was there. A video, he was a videographer for the for uh, uh, National Public Radio, I guess. Okay. Okay. Public Television. Mitch Public Television. He was dressed in green. Oh, really? Yeah. Head to toe. Oh. It was great. Kyle Heavey <laughs> of uh, Off the Mark Sports. Yes, yes. He looked quite green. Oh, okay. Did he have a good time? Well, he was working. Yeah. <laughs> he was working it, so I don't I don't know. So, uh, so are there plans to do this again next year with the morning show? Because it sounds like it was a rousing success. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and and I, I only can say that because... Uh, uh, of the you know the different positioning of the table this year yeah. as opposed to previous years where yeah. in previous years I think everybody uh, you know Peter and whoever he had with him felt part of the program right we right we did not feel part of the program mm. whatsoever yeah whatsoever Carol uh, Robert who showed up it was funny because she was uh, assigned a specific table yeah she went over to go to the table that she was assigned to and she didn't know anybody yeah so she came and hung with us yeah. Yeah. And we got her some breakfast. Oh, well, there you go. There you go. <laughs> so wow. that was good. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> so it sounds like a, a, a great time, but also miserable <laughs> at the same time. In the same breath. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Hey, sometimes you got to embrace the suck. That's what one of my, one of my friends say. <laughs> That's Just, a good saying. I like that. You know, I like to say lean into the horror. You know, lean, like lean when people are talking horror. about, you know, like b- people who are upset, uh, you know, at the, the president about one thing or another. I'll yeah. say you got to lean into the horror. Oh, man. Might you as know, well. Might as well. Yeah. Just lean into it. He couldn't wait to get into that uh, little hands thing with uh, Beto t- uh, today. Now, yes. Well, I, okay. So I did watch uh, Beto's announcement, and did you guys see it? Yeah. I did. Yeah. 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 So he does do a lot. Like he's got his hands clasped, and he's he very does, active. He does do a lot of this. <laughs> um, but I don't. It, you know, it is sort of a pot meat kettle moment for Trump of all people to be right. criticizing because Trump. You know, and if you if you're watching on Facebook Live, you can see. You know, Trump does the accordion uh, when he talks. You know, right, he does a lot right. of this, or he does this sometimes. He's very rigid with his motions. Well, he's got to move his hands really fast because they have to seem like they're they're bigger. That's why. Right, right, yeah. That's what I said. <laughs> it that, does be my first thing. A it, comeback. It, it does create that effect. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Of course, the one exception to that is when uh, the, when Trump is making fun of a disabled person. Then he's a little bit creative. You're right. But, oh, uh, wow. Yeah. 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 I was talking about that earlier, uh, all the people who uh, – believe that that didn't actually happen i was even. telling ben that you know i'm i'm starting to feel that over this over two year period of time that we've been under this you know horror that i think the american people are i, I really feel that they're getting a sense that he's psych- psychologically unfit i really get that sense and and it's only because of the the, the amount of time that has passed that mm. we've all been able to see it up close and personal yeah. I mean, he can't hide that. Yeah, yeah. The narcissistic, 
just bullying behavior, humiliation, you know, you name it. Yeah. And if people can't recognize that that's evil, we got a serious problem. Well, there's something very strange about, uh, I mean, at the very least, he's shockingly insecure. Oh. The guy can't even mention, I was talking about it earlier, and I was talking about it the other day, too, when it happened. The guy can't even admit that he, like, a simple mistake that anybody could make, like when he referred to Tim Cook as Tim uh, Apple. Tim I Apple. saw that. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Any normal human being, I mean, that could happen to anybody. That's not that's not a sign of an issue in and of itself. Any, But any normal, what is a sign of an issue is any normal human being would just be like, oh, sorry, yeah, I misspoke. Right. I, I do it all the time on this show. I, I, I'm sure I, I get names wrong and whatever. I mean, it happens. Even if you don't acknowledge it right away. Yeah, just yeah. Just later on, it's okay. Like, uh, is, did he mean to say that? I oh, just kind of messed, you know, it was a, he didn't mean to say that. Right, right. Yeah. But, it, but instead, what does he do? And it's so predictable. <clears throat> Everybody knew this is what he was going to do. He's going to deny that he made the mistake. First, yeah, yeah. first he was claiming that he actually did say Tim Cook. He just, you know, he just said it fast and we didn't hear it. <laughs> and the media with their fake news who's out to get him is pretending he didn't actually say it when he did say Tim Cook yes. or Tim Cook of Apple. We just didn't. We're just acting like we didn't hear it. And then he changes it to. Oh, he was just speaking in shorthand, you know, he because he wanted what did he say? He wanted to save time and words. So instead of <laughs> apparently in that brief second it was really important to be efficient and yeah, employ in that some, context. some some economy of language. So it says he says, wow. you know, Tim Apple instead of Tim Cook of Apple, but we all should have known he meant Tim Cook of Apple clearly. So th- that and it's clearly so irrelevant. I know, but he can't even it, you know what it, it, he reminds me of is I had a boss years ago. He might even be listening. I won't say his name. And it, and it's some. And I don't mean to to uh, speak negatively about him because he and I got to be really good friends. But but he did have have some. Uh, he was a little loose with the truth at times. And I did notice after. Uh, oh, I shut off the. I meant to shut off Ben's mic and I shut off yours. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, ben had to leave the room for those of you who are listening. Um, and uh, he, I, I noticed at a certain point, like he would, he would tell little fibs, you know, like, like he might fib to the uh, district manager if like he was the manager at the store we were at. I was his okay. assistant manager and we would have a district manager. Like he might fib to the manager if, you know, like if I made a mistake that I was going to get in trouble for and he didn't want me to get in trouble Okay. You, you know, he might lie about something like that. Like, and, and he was that kind of guy. He would, you know, he would fib here and there to protect people. Okay. You know, and whatnot, um, which Trump, I appreciate. Trump is trying to protect himself. Right. But the thing is, though, what I noticed at a certain point was I would overhear him lying about things that didn't even matter. Oh, geez. You know, like I would hear him on the phone talking to somebody at corporate or something and saying something about me like, oh, yeah, my assistant Matt said uh, he saw that... Uh, or he he read that review of that uh, CD and and he said it was really good and you know and like I'm I'm hearing that and it's not something that reflects negatively on me in any way but it's also not a lie that seems to have any purpose exactly and, and then I started to look for that pattern and I realized sometimes he would lie about things for no apparent reason with no purpose at all right and and that's when I was like that's that's weird like why do that um. Although, I mean, it wasn't like with Trump, though, in the sense that he had no problem, like if he misspoke, like any normal person, he would just say, oh, I got that wrong. Sure, sure. And it wasn't a big deal. But he did do this thing where he would lie for no reason, which I, I think is is considered, you know, pathological. I, but, perhaps, uh, perhaps. I saw the other day where they had, uh, somebody's been tracking the, the lies and the half-truths yeah. over his entire uh period of time in office yeah and apparently it's uh eight thousand. Oh, i believe it yeah and the climbing yeah. yeah yeah he just lies nuts. so freely it's strange well we got we got a handle on it we got it we'll be we're going to be okay i'm i'm feeling more confident that we're going to get past this what you and that you don't think he's going to win re-election i don't know if he's going to make it oh you think he might be impeached i don't think impeachment's the way to go though i'm kind of leaning towards the pelosi theory What's that? You know, because it's going to be so um, just horrible for the American people to be put through that again. Yeah. And the likelihood of anything happening is is not likely. 
Right. You know, so I think just the general process that he's we're going to go through, the Southern District's going to come, come down on him. So I, well, that's I, you know, the real it's danger. It's going to shake out. That's going to shake out. That's the danger to him is the Southern District of New York. It's not the Mueller probe, in my no. opinion. The, the real danger to him is the Southern District of New York. Absolutely. Um, I mean, if he weren't president, honestly, he probably would have already been indicted by now. Yes, sir. So, so uh, you know, even if he does make the, make the 2020 campaign, uh, it, 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 he can't survive. Yeah. There's no way. Yeah. There's no way. And, you know, with uh, with Joe Biden uh, considering uh, running, uh, I think uh, as a, uh, you know, I think that might be a, a, the way to go for the Democrats. Yeah. Yeah. Although I don't know. Jeez. I don't know. It's hard to, it, it's hard to. He's a moderate. So oh, yeah. So he's kind yeah. of in line with the, you know, the, the, the party, you know, the party line. Yeah. And uh, Beto is uh, progressive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that combination could work in some kind of strange conglomeration. Beto, I've noticed, uh, and I pointed this out to a caller uh, earlier, and it's, it's probably a function of his height. He has very, it looks like he has very large hands. Right. So I think it would be interesting to see him debate Trump. So when they when they go to shake hands, you know, Trump with his tiny hands, it'll look like they're just like swallowed up in, <laughs> in Beto's uh, big meaty hands, you know. Love it. That'd be a great, uh, <laughs> great visual. Oh, yeah. But, uh yeah, I can't pick a front runner for the Democrats at this mm. point. It's it's that's too soon, so early, and I'm not personally excited about anybody. But I'm an independent. I'll probably maybe Gary Johnson will run again. I can vote for him again. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's early, yeah. and uh, I I got this I got this feeling we're going to have more uh, more people coming out to 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 run. I don't think it's yeah. uh, I don't think the number's going to go down. Not at least right not right now. Right, yeah, it's going up. Yeah. Yeah. We don't even know if Biden's definitely in, but the rumor is that he is. Right. But he see, he fooled everybody because I was sure he was running in 2016 because right before or like a week before he made the announcement that he was not running, um, there was he he changed his story. Do you remember when when Obama ordered ordered uh, uh was the SEAL Team 6 in to get uh, bin Laden. Okay. The story afterward was that there was only a 50-50 chance that bin Laden was actually there. And Biden, in uh, interviews, had said that he was kind of the voice of caution in telling Obama, I don't think it's worth the risk. Really? And he said that in 2012 <laughs> when Obama was running for re-election. And I think strategically at the time, Biden said that, what was saying that because, or admitting that, because even though Obama turned out to be right, Biden figured it actually reinforces Obama as a decisive leader to say, look, even I thought it was the wrong move, right. but he went with his gut and turned out to be right. Correct. Right before he made his announcement that he was not running in 2016, for the first time, he started to publicly change his own story and said, Oh no no! I didn't. I didn't tell Obama not to go. I told him to just be careful. I never mm. said don't go, Mr. President. All of a sudden, his story changed. Yeah, and I thought that's a clue. That means he's running because he's worried that his original story hurts him. Right. Because he was wrong. Uh, he was. He, you know, he was trying to and to side with Obama. He was right. Right. Got so it. I thought he's running because he. Why else would he change his story if he wasn't running? And then also too, there's there's this website that was it was like draftbiden.org or something that was uh, trying to um you know get all these petitions to get Biden to run, and then that went dark like a couple days before Biden made his announcement. So I thought, well, that's probably another clue. And then he said, nope. Not doing it. Wasn't it a, a big issue about his son passing as well? Yeah, I mean, he was still grieving the loss of Bo, yeah, who yeah. died at uh, <laughs> in his in his mid forties, I think. Yep. So uh, terrible. Um, so we'll see. I mean, it looks like he's getting in this time, but uh, well, we're we got to wrap up because uh, what what, have you, what do you have coming up on the weekly die on? We've got uh, executive counselor from District Two, Andrew Volinsky. Very good. Very good. So uh, the weekly die on is next, and will you be on the morning show again this week? Uh, no, I'll be on Monday. Oh, you'll be on Monday. Okay, uh, you can hear Daryl uh, sometimes on the morning show, and of course every week here on uh, or on the weekly die on here on WMNH, which is coming up at six p.m. 
Here, I'm going to play this uh, for Q, Neil Diamond, Coming to America. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yes, Q's, Q's my favorite caller. Uh, and uh, if you missed any part of today's show, it'll be up in just a little bit at WMNHradio.org. And uh, I am out of here for now. I'll talk at y'all a little bit later. Bye, everybody. IPMNation.com. 